Chris Eubank Jr. joins us live. Chris, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, Chris. Good afternoon to you. Mr. Jordan is to my right. Spencer Oliver is to my left. But you are first and for, uh, for, at the forefront of this for us, Chris. We're delighted you've joined us live. Uh, Chris, you embrace this rematch, do you? You, you? you thoroughly appreciate the opportunity to go in against Liam Smith again, but this time do a job on him. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's going to be the first time I've ever gone into the ring against a man who has a win over me. So it's going to be interesting to see how that affects my uh, affects my performance. Um, yeah, I, I I'm not going to lie. I did not expect to be here. Um, you know, about to do another gloves were off with Liam Smith uh, <laughs> after I get off here with you. Uh, I didn't expect this to happen, but that's the sexy thing about boxing is that anything can happen. You know, expect the unexpected. Uh, we're here. We're going to get it on again, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I'm going to even the score. Chris, how, how easy was it a decision to um, reactivate the rematch clause that you had in the last contest, uh, contest after that defeat against Liam Smith? Was it a decision? Because I know there was talks of you going and fighting Conor Ben. I, thought, I know there was a couple of fights on the table for you. How did you come to that decision to fight Smith again? Uh, yes, there was a sub substantial offer made for me to go and fight Conor uh, overseas. Uh, you know, I entertained the uh, the offers and 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 the um, you know the the you know to see what what they were willing to do to make that fight. Um, but you know, Smith is. Uh, I mean, that fight was always gonna. I was always gonna take the rematch. You know, at some point because you know he has a win over me, and I need to avenge that. Um, at this particular moment in time, I decided that you know fighting Ben overseas. It just it, it just wasn't right. It wasn't um, it wasn't the right thing to do. Uh, I needed to take care of business. I think Ben has a lot to to answer for. Still, he has a lot to figure out. He has a lot. He's a, he has a lot to prove. Um, you know, I think he needs to get his British Boxing Board of Control license back. And I think that when the fight does get made, which it will, it should be in the UK. Um, so you know, those decisions. Uh, you know, need to be sorted out and made before before we... Okay, uh, we, okay right. Chris. Uh, I mean, Chris, uh, you'll probably be well aware that Simon is fairly outspoken when it comes to boxing, fairly outspoken about everything. And Simon, you just, you described Chris Eubank Jr. as a charlatan after his defeat to Liam Smith. Right? Well, I describe, Elaborate on I, that. I describe him as a charlatan because we get to listen to um, Chris talking about world title fights and the level that he's at, and we don't actually get to see them many times. And every time Chris steps up to that level, he gets beat by it, as he has done by George Groves and Billy Joe Saunders. But what I also saw and what I also see, and I see it slightly differently now, is that he is remarkably one of the best showmen and best sellers in this country because someone that's achieved not quite as much as I think his boxing ability should have achieved is a remarkable showman. Is that fair it's comment, a remarkable Chris? showman. Is that fair comment? Uh, you, you know, anyone who's going to say that, you know, some of the fighters that I've fought and beat, you know, weren't look world level or, you know, I've, I, every time I've only stepped up twice and I've lost twice or, you know, before the Smith fight, I don't, I don't think they really understand what it takes to get into the ring with, uh, with these elite level athletes um well such as who chris such as Hugh. who have you stepped into you can say what well, james the girl a vanquished and finished james the girl who are I we talking who are we talking about that we're saying that you've beaten to suggest I that, that i'm wrong in that assumption many fighters on, on my resume that uh, have been world-class fighters that i've beaten uh, and but just give me an example, know. Chris. It's not and obviously you, uh, you know, I don't know what it takes to do what you do because I could never have the courage to do what you do, and that's fair enough, and I understand that. But I'm just questioning what you're saying by saying, Well, give me an example of a fighter that I've not recognized on your record to say, Well, actually, I'm wrong, I'm wrong with my observation. He is a world why, level fighter and he should be winning world why titles. James the girl wasn't, wasn't a world, world level, not fighter. when you fought him, no. Why do you say that? Because he was finished and vanquished. What you thought was a carcass of James the girl. Well, you know, you say that, but other people would say that, you know, I I made him look like that because of my ability in the ring. Possibly. Possibly. I think a lot of people that I've yeah. spoken to in and around the boxing fraternity suggest that maybe that's not the case. But I'm not here to split hairs with you. I think that this will be a great fight now. I was surprised at the outcome. 
Um, I had Liam Smith to beat you, but I didn't have him to beat you in the manner that he did. After the fight, I didn't think there was any real merit because you'd said the Kentucky Fried Chicken eating fella that only needed to train for 60% that this guy was going to be easily dealt with. And if you lost, you wouldn't fight again. And I saw no benefit. But now I look at it again. I look at the fact that you had to go through two camps and got weight drains and all the challenges that you have. So now we might have the real Chris Eubank here now. I can see the merit of this fight now. You know, I, I, I never said that I would not fight again if I lost. Uh, um, I said anything can happen in the sport of boxing, and that is why we had the rematch clause and anything did happen. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting to lose to uh, to Liam, but, you know, the the exciting thing is uh, we, we have an opportunity here to set the record straight. I do believe I'm the better fighter. Um, you, said, you, you said you picked him to beat me. Mm. Um, I think most people didn't. And I think that the bookies still see me as a favorite. And I was right, reason- one Well, yeah, well, yeah, he got the decision. But at the end so, of the so day... It, so, Chris, what will, you do, what will you do differently this time? Um, what will I do differently? I mean, I'm I'm not going to give him many opportunities. I, I, get, I did give him an opportunity to do what he did in that fourth round. I believe I was dominating the fight up until then. The third round, I hurt him. I was hitting him with shots freely. And maybe that, uh, you know, put me in a into a full sense of security, gave me a, an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, l- not let my guard down, but maybe take my eye off the ball for a second. And, and he took the opportunity and, uh, and, and you guys saw what happened. Uh, that will never happen again. You know, that is something that I have learned and taken away from this fight is that even guys that aren't big punches, you know, they can put it on you. And Fair they enough. are dead. Fair enough. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, oh, yeah. I was gonna I was yeah. gonna ask you a question. You know, you you have been in with some big punches and you've taken some some shots off some big punches. People like George Groves, very heavy, super middleweight. You know, we have Liam Smith who's campaigned most of his career as a light middleweight, and your punch resistance didn't seem to be as good as it has been in previous fights or in your in your career, really. Is that down to you taking your weight down to the weight that you took it down to to box Conor Ben and your body not being able to readjust in time and, and the punch resistance maybe not coming back to the, as good as what it was. Question I'm asking, the reason I'm asking this question is because it is a talking point and it is a big debate. You know, I think that that took an effect on your body um, and that's what I've been saying and I'd just like to hear that from you. I, you know, I'm not here to make excuses. Uh, you know, yes, at 33 years old, it's harder to cut weight. Yes, having two weight cuts back to back, um, you know, probably wasn't the best thing for my body. Yes, I did cut cut weight a certain way for this fight, which I've never done before, uh, which I will not be doing again. But all of those things, I'm not going to say are the reason why what happened happened. Um, you know, if you swing if you swim for long enough, you you know you're you're going to get water in your lungs at some point. You know, it was it was my it was my turn to uh you know to 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 get upset. You know, to for 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 something to happen. I just wish that um you know I was given more of an opportunity to get through that uh to to get through that you know hardship to get through that moment of um you know of 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 uh, of being buzzed and, and trying to recuperate, so but, but, but you weren't, Chris. The simple fact was, mate, you weren't, um, and we know oh. how it, and, and we know the outcome. So, what can you promise us this time, June the seventeenth? What we what we're going to see? Um, what can I promise you? I, I can promise you that the fight's going to be exceptionally exciting to watch. Um, you know, I can't promise you the the uh, you know the outcome. Uh, nobody can. You know, I think I will win. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that I win. Um, but the fight is going to be, um, it's going to be, it's going to have a different, it's going to have a different texture to it than it did uh, the first time around. The first time around, I didn't really have anything to prove. I was sure I was going to win. I sure I was sure I was going to dominate. And, you know, there was no real pressure on me. Um, this time, it, it really is everything on the line. You know, I can say, all right, he caught me. It was a once in a lifetime thing. And, you know, I can say that for one loss. If he beats me twice, mm. he's the better man. I have to, I have to take my hat off to no, him. Fair enough, I, fair enough. I won't be able to sleep with that. I won't be able to live with that. So I'm not going to let that happen. Jim White and Simon Jordan. 
Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.